Sean is showering and going to the restroom. It's uh, not as hard as people make it up to be, but it is a little bit of an inconvenience. I do have a portable shower pump that I can put in my water jug and I can go take a shower outside if I need to. If I am in the city, I obviously cannot take showers outside because, well, it's weird. And uh, I do have a gym membership for Planet Fitness. And what's nice about this membership, it's only 20 bucks a month. And I do work out, I do use their hydro massages, I love those things. But the best thing about Planet Fitness is that it's nationwide. So with my membership, I can go to any gym that I want, as long as it's Planet Fitness, obviously, but they have plenty. So it's nice to take showers. With the restroom situation, when I hear people going like, it's a must, you can't go without it. Let me remind you that I used to live in New York City, in Manhattan. And for the most part, I was away from my apartment. So most places don't really like it when you go and ask to go to the restroom without buying stuff. So sometimes I would have to go buy a coffee or something and go to the restroom. It's changed a little bit uh, these days, but that's how I went to the restroom. There's parks, there's uh, different buildings that you can go to, malls and all that stuff. So there's basically restrooms to be found all over the place. Unless you're in the middle of nowhere, which doesn't matter because nobody's gonna see you doing your business. <laughs> but it's not perfect, yeah. It's a little bit more challenging. Even for people that take road trips, you know, what do you do? You just stop at rest stops or whatever you find the restroom and you just uh, use it. So it's not a huge deal. Nevertheless, it's a bit inconvenient because if you really have to go, you really have to go. I, for example, have a pee bottle and I also have the poo bucket. I use them in emergencies, but I do use them. That's one of the things that van life might suck. Number two is parking for tonight in the city. If you're stealth camping, it's always a great idea to make it a routine where I'll know I'm gonna park before I actually park there. Right now I'm at a park during the day. I'm uh, enjoying the day outdoors, but for tonight, I already know where I'm gonna go park. So that's one of the things that a lot of people don't talk about. And it is a routine that's part of van life, especially if I'm still camping in the city. I have to move every night. That could be a little stressful for some people. You can't really stay long in one place. My routine is going at night, sleep, wake up in the morning, preferably before everyone else. And then when I move, they don't even know that I was there. It also beats all the parking uh, signs. For example, street sweeping doesn't really start before seven o'clock. All the parking laws don't really start before seven o'clock. So moving before seven also allows me to avoid all the other stuff. Sometimes I'll park at a meter, but after a certain hour, it's free. And then before seven o'clock in the morning, let's say, it's also free. So if I stay between that time bracket, then it's uh, super easy to find parking that otherwise would be a little bit harder to find. However, it is something that is not fun to do. And it's definitely one major damp in my day, at least, because I have to do this. I have to think about it. I have to think ahead of time where I'm gonna be parking. I have to look at street signs and all that stuff. So it's a little bit of work. I made it a routine. It's not as hard as it was at the beginning. With that said, parking on the side of the street, I got used to it, but you are gonna hear cars passing by. You're gonna hear the crazy people with like sports cars, like revving their engines really high. But at the same time, I'm not very considerate about it. Either way, I'm gonna hear them while I sleep, but I am used to it. I managed to sleep pretty well at night. And this is something that may be a little bit of a learning curve for some people when they start van life. But if this lifestyle is for you, then you'll get used to it. Number three, no matter how much people make this lifestyle to be great, it is great, but you do live in a small space. There's no way of going around that, especially me. I don't have a high roof. I hit my head all the time. I sometimes knock my drinks over because they're too close to the edge. And when I turn around, I spill them over. It depends on the lifestyle. I kind of got used to it. Like I said, today I'm at a nice park. I have my doors open, no problem. People will pick in, but I'm kind of used to it by now. That's another thing that some people might take a bit of time to get used to, but uh, people will look in your van and sometimes they'll come up and ask questions and you know, they're just interested, which is fine. But if privacy is of a concern, I just don't open the doors. But if I'm at a park, I don't care. I, you know, people come and have picnics here all the time. So because it's a small space, I obviously don't spend this whole day here. The only time I spend the whole day here is when I edit videos because they take a long time. I've tried to edit videos outside, but it's usually too bright for me to see anything on the computer. So I have to stay inside. Sometimes it gets 
it's hot. At a place like this, I can have the doors open and I can sit in bed and edit videos and I still, the computer is still really fine to look at, but it is a small space. It's the bed, a bit of closet, you know, and that's pretty much it. So that's another learning curve. That's something very difficult for some people. That's, you know, so if you can get the biggest van that you can, that might help out a little bit. But for the most part, for me, is I spend time outside. Number four, receiving mail and packages and stuff like that. I'm lucky enough that, you know, I have my mailing address at my sister's house. However, I have most of the stuff online. I try to do the most paperless that I can from anybody that I receive mail just so I don't have to worry about it. I don't receive a lot of mail, but I do once in a while get packages from Amazon. That's a little bit tougher. However, Amazon does have a few options when you order stuff where you can actually go pick it up. It'll tell you when it's gonna be there. And in most cases, it's much better because you're not missing the packages somewhere. I, for my own personal life, I don't order a lot of things because I don't have a lot of space to put anything. I just order things that I need, things that break sometimes, you know, and it's usually camera stuff for me. That's one of the things that uh, is a bit inconvenient. I mean, I think it's a lot inconvenient because you kind of have to chase your packages. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's just another thing that once I get used to it, it's not that big of a deal. If you follow a trend here in van life, I have to always plan ahead. Like if I'm gonna go shower, if I'm gonna go use the restroom, if I'm gonna go get packages, it's always going to be plan ahead. That's definitely part of the routine for van life for me. I think it's a great routine to have for some of you that are just starting van life. Some of the things that I find a bit difficult is where to get water. I have two separate drugs where I actually get my drinking water from those vending machines for water. I'm not sure what they call them, but they just look like a vending machine and you get water from them, super easy. It's 40 cents in the US. I think that's fine because it's filtered water. And then for the sink, for me to use, if I were to wash my face, take the showers and stuff like that, I usually use these parts. I have a yearly pass where they also have camping and they also have day use. A lot of them do have like spigots that I can get water. Because I don't have a shower in here, I don't use a lot of water. I have a foot pump which also limits how much water comes through the hose. That's why I don't put a pump in there. Another place where I can get water, it's usually at a car wash or a gas station. I Overlander is an app that also includes something like this. It actually has filters where you can choose what you want it to show you. And then one of them is like spigots to get water, propane, uh, showers and stuff like that. If it's public showers, like sometimes it's a shower on the beach. But uh, this app is really good for stuff like that as well, not just finding camping spots. Number five, where to get internet? Because I do make these videos, then I upload to YouTube and stuff like that. A trick that I learned if you're actually interested in like uploading stuff to social media, when I finish my video, I'll download it back to the phone and then upload it from the phone. And that way it's high speed internet because if I were to upload it from my computer through my Wi-Fi tethering on my phone, that's super slow. <laughs> and then it doesn't upload. Those are extreme situations. I usually find a coffee shop and upload from there. They usually have pretty good internet speeds. The libraries are really good for that. But I also go after everything's edited. I only go there for like 35 to an hour, depends on the Wi-Fi speeds to upload. At some point, I'm looking to get Starlink. I haven't put my order in for that. But Starlink is basically satellite internet. If you haven't heard of it already, it's Elon Musk's other company. Last but not least, uh, there is one thing that you have to realize and understand that this is part of van life, is that everything when you're driving is a constant earthquake. So everything needs to be put away. You're gonna hear some rattles here and there. I try my best to like put things away where they don't rattle as much. The other thing is that making sure that things don't fall and break. It's another part of van life and it has certainly happened to me and it's gonna happen to you probably. You know, a drawer comes loose or something because I haven't put it away correctly or I actually forgot my phone on the counter and I drove away and then it fell off. Thankfully it didn't break. And you get the idea 
but that's one of the van life routines and I usually just do a quick check everywhere just to make sure nothing is gonna fall off. If I didn't convince you so far that van life sucks is because yes, there are a lot of hard things to deal with, a lot of inconveniences, but I still love the lifestyle. I got used to it and it's a bit of a challenge here and there, depends where you are. There's a lot of constant thinking of head to just make sure that you're on top of things and it's a different lifestyle. At the end of the day, if it's for you, you're gonna love it. If it's not for you, it's not for you. If you wanna see more van life related content, I have this video up here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.